I want to offer you, in this denouement of my presentation, just a sense of our, where we are in the universe. And the only way I can do that is to get you familiar with numbers and their size. So here's the number one written three ways, needs no introduction. The, if you're unfamiliar with scientific notation, the zero, that's sort of the exponent there, tells you how many places to the right the decimal has moved to the right of the one. And it hasn't moved at all, so it's zero, right? A familiar number. Let's go up by a factor of 1,000. The decimals move three places. You got 10 to the third, 1,000 metric prefix kilo. I note here and now that drug dealers were metric long before Americans were, okay? <laughs> Kilos, it was like, first time I ever heard the word kilo were, were you know, drug busts. I say, wow, they're metric, that's cool. <laughs> that's all I thought. I was a nerd kid, so that was an okay thought. <laughs> It wasn't always 50 pounds of cocaine. No, they're, doing, they're measuring it in, in metric. Go up by another factor of 1,000, you get a million, one with six zeros. Remember when computer strength was measured in mega, uh, megabytes and mega? Uh, there are 8 million people living in New York. Eight of these are my neighbors in New York. Go up by another factor of 1,000, you get to a billion. Carl Sagan's favorite number. In fact, if you bring your chin out and say the word billion, it sounds beautiful. We'll do it together on three. Ready? First, stick your chin out. Okay, one, two, three, billion. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That's just beautiful. <laughs> That's just beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> billion. That's a fun number. Anyone here 31 years old? Raise your hand. Got to be a few of you. Very nice. In this year of your life, you will live your billionth second. I'm, yes, I'm geeky enough to have calculated this. <laughs> 31 years, 259 days, one hour, 46 minutes, and 40 seconds. But you have to account for leap days and leap seconds, okay? I'm gonna try to make an app that'll do this, but I haven't done it yet. I've been busy doing other things. But I celebrated my own billionth second with a really small glass of champagne. Uh, <laughs> uh, 50 of these billions uh, let's see, I think a neighbor of yours, uh, is, he's a neighbor, right? Isn't he? He's like, you see him around town, I presume? <laughs> Not, okay. Uh, his his well, net worth is like $50 billion, plus or minus. I don't know if you know how much that is. I, I don't believe you know. You don't. In fact, I'm certain you don't, because I'm going to tell you. I will tell you how rich this man is. First of all, it's, I'm, I'm charmed by the fact that the patron saint of geeks is the richest man in the world. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a different world than it was when the richest people were sort of oil barons and steel barons. It's like a geek is the richest guy in the world. That's kind of cool. But 50, I, I did this math because I walk along the street. You know, I, I have a job and I own a home. And I'm walking down the street, and I see a coin in the street. My question to myself is, what is the smallest denomination coin that I'll bend down and pick up? Okay? <laughs> Given the fact that I have a job, and I own a home. So, the penny is staying. I'm not getting the penny. The nickel, no, nah, I'm not getting the nickel. Dime, if I'm not in a hurry, I'm picking up the dime. <laughs> Okay, a quarter, well that's good for parking meters and laundry, plus it's a quarter, right? So I'm picking up the quarter. So for me, the boundary between picking up the coin and not is between a dime and a quarter. So I figured let me ratio this up to that wealth <laughs> and ask how much money has to be laying in the street <laughs> for Bill Gates to be too busy to pick it up. It's $45,000, okay? That's what it is. $45,000, I said, too busy. Somebody else get that. I'm, I got... That's how rich the man is, in case you didn't know. Let's go to 100 billion. I've seen this number before. Where have I seen it? McDonald's. 
actually, they, they, they had a, like a Y2K problem with their accounting. <laughs> they didn't have a third spot. So they went to 99. Then after that, they just said, after Carl Sagan visited them, <laughs> what do they now say? Billions and billions, of course. But I remember when they had 100 billion, if you lay those hamburgers end to end, you can do this. Start right here in Seattle. Go right across the Pacific Ocean. Float them on a little plate. And you can come around back and come right back here to Seattle, across the Europe, the Atlantic, the United States, and come right back here with your 100 billion hamburgers, and you can do that 52 times. Then with what's left over, you can stack them with what's left over and make a stack high enough to reach the moon and back. <laughs> then you would, have consumed, you would have laid out your 100 billion hamburgers. This is terrifying news to cows, all right? I just thought you would know. <laughs> also 100 billion. Do you realize that in one linear centimeter of your lower colon lives and works 100 billion microbes, which is a bigger number, about the same number, as the total number of human beings who have ever lived. That's what's going on in your lower intestine. Yet we like to think that we're actually in charge of things. But from the point of view of the bacteria, we are just a warm, dark, anaerobic location for fecal matter. It's just, just a reality check here, okay? <laughs> we tend to make things nicer for ourselves with words. Like, like what's the, the, uh, the book that has optical illusions? Who doesn't like a good optical illusion? Of course, that's not what they are. They're brain failures. That's what it, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, I can't figure it out. Is the line in or out of the page? Oh, my gosh. Those books should be called brain failures. <laughs> a few more, and then we got a trillion. By the way, can you count to a trillion? Hmm. Where's my 31-year-old? Yeah, so if you, if you counted one number per second since birth, you'd just be getting to a billion about now. So if you wanted to get to a trillion, which is a thousand times bigger than a billion, how many years would that take you? 31,000 years, right? It's simple math. It takes 31 years to count to a billion, 31,000 to count to a trillion, so definitely don't try that at home. 30, 31, uh, a trillion seconds ago, somebody painted those on a cave in Lescaux, France. False. <laughs> Have you ever heard the joke? It's like a really stupid, uh, self-deprecating joke. You say, you know, the French, they don't even have a word for entrepreneur. You know? <laughs> Can only be spoken by a monolingual American. So uh, we have billion, trillion. What's the next number here? Quadrillion, there, someone said zillion, no, almost. <laughs> uh, quadrillion, uh, that's about 100 quadrillion is the number of sounds and words ever uttered by all humans who have ever lived. So these numbers are getting really huge, really fast. Billion, trillion, quadrillion, what's next? Quintillion, there's one of my favorite numbers, about the number of grains of sand on an average beach. Even the sand that comes home in your crotch, you know? I counted those, add all those up, they're in this number. <laughs> Million, billion, quadrillion, quintillion, sextillion. A one with 21 zeros. Of what possible significance can this number have that? is the estimated number of stars in the universe. Stars in the universe. Some people, this depresses them. 
Among them, this gentleman, a professor of psychology at the University of Pennsylvania. We opened a space show 11 years ago that was a zoom out from Earth. And Earth shrunk down and the solar system shrunk down and it just became one of the stars in the background field. Then our whole galaxy shrunk down and it was just one of countless other galaxies in the universe. He saw that space show. I am assistant professor of social cultural psychology at University of Pennsylvania. I want to conduct a research project in collaboration with the planetarium. My research focuses on the psychological experiences associated with feelings of insignificance. <laughs> I'm thinking, damn, bummer of a job. What? <laughs> What's he like when he comes home? Honey, I'm home. <laughs> how is work today? Miserable. You know, how does that work? How do you even do this? I recently saw the space show at the planetarium, and needless to say, it was the most dramatic eliciter of feelings of smallness and insignificance that I have yet encountered. <laughs> he wanted to conduct a survey. I'd be grateful we can conduct a simple questionnaire survey at the planetarium. They want to interview people going in and then coming out of the space show. <laughs> I submit to you that if you go in feeling large and come out feeling small, it meant you went in with an ego unjustifiably high to begin with. The problem is not in the universe. The problem is within you. That's what I submit. Let's take a look at something real quick. Cosmic abundances of the elements ranking them top to bottom, most abundant to least. Number one in the universe, hydrogen, cool. Number two, helium, very nice. Number three, oxygen. Four, carbon. Five, nitrogen. My favorite element of them all, other. Okay, so then, <laughs> how about life on Earth? What's the, what's the ranking of elements in life on Earth. Well, all life contains water of some kind or another. Water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen's got to be pretty high up there. Sure enough, it's the number one element in life on Earth. Uh, what's next? Oh, you know, we don't actually have helium. Remember, helium is a noble gas. It does not interact with anything. So helium is not in life on Earth. You could inhale it, then you sound like Mickey Mouse. Next most abundant ingredient, life on Earth, oxygen. Next, carbon, in order. Next, nitrogen, and together class, other. We are one for one the same ingredients that appear in the universe. If we were made of like an isotope of bismuth, you might say, hey, we're kind of, we're different. We got something different going on now. Hey, excuse me, we are the same as the universe. And these elements are forged in the centers of stars. This is actually an image of the center of the galaxy, but there's stars within here that forge those elements, explode from what we call supernova explosions, scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy, enabling freshly born star systems to contain the basic ingredients of life itself. And this is going on in every single galaxy across the universe. If I can, we can dim the lights for this, the last two images. The, this is our nearest large galaxy called the Andromeda Galaxy. It happens to be among the stars of the constellation Andromeda. That fuzzy spiral contains 400 billion stars. These other stars you see in the picture are sitting on our nose in our own Milky Way. It's as though we're looking past a screen door through the void of intergalactic space to another galaxy. If you pull out the power of the Hubble Space Telescope and say, I'm not gonna look at this big galaxy, I wanna look at an uninteresting corner of the dark night sky and show me what's there, this is what shows up. This image has three stars in it that happen to be sitting on our nose. One of them, if you can still see me, is right here. They have spikes. Another one is directly over me here and there's one at the top Every other smudge, every other shape in this image is an entire galaxy from nearby to the distant universe. Every single splotch on this image. This is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. That's what it's called. 
And you sit here and gaze upon it and recognize that every smudge is like our own Milky Way, containing hundreds of billions of stars, some of which are forging these heavy elements that comprise life, exploding, scattering themselves into their own galaxies. And it is this knowledge that we have of the universe and our knowledge that we have of chemistry and our knowledge that we have of biology that allows us to derive the conclusion that no, we are not apart and separate from this universe. We are one with it. I can say one better than that. Not only are we one with it, because these elements are forged in the universe and they become part of life as we know it. It's not simply the fact that we are in the universe, but ladies and gentlemen, the universe is in us. And I know of no more profound understanding or revelation that modern science can deliver but that. And for me, that makes me feel large, not small. Thank you all for this evening. <laughs>